I know that uh, foreign talent is very important. No? Foreign talent, welcome. But uh, they should be professionals. Eh? I need foreign talent. Now, sales assistants and all, there are many Singaporeans who can uh, fill up the job. So, this one simple example. One, if, if, if I just one example, it could be in other shopping centers also. So, is this part of the policy? I think, first of all, we need to separate between different groups. There are people who um, come to Singapore to work for a period of time. And even among the people who come to Singapore to work for a period of time, there are those which do work which Singaporeans don't want to do. So, I personally don't like the term foreign talent, uh, because I, and I hardly ever use it myself, because I mean, it, I'm not quite sure what it means in the end. So I'd rather divide it into groups of people who are here in Singapore. And uh, there's one group, and that's the largest group. Uh, there are people who are here who do work, which broadly speaking, Singaporeans themselves don't want to do. Or there are not enough Singaporeans who want to do this work. And there are a very large category of work like this. For example, the conservancy work that is being done um, in your own estates. So while we try to provide more work opportunities for Singaporeans, there are categories of work where the number of Singaporeans who want to do the work is not very large. And we need to employ many foreigners to do the work, otherwise the work just does not get done. A good example is a wafer fabrication plant that I visited. It's got about 1,500 workers. About one quarter of its production line workforce are non-Singaporean. Some of them live in Singapore because they, they, they find it more convenient to live here and work because they're work permit holders. But about one quarter of the workers are Singaporean, about three quarters are non-Singaporean. But when you look at their professional workforce, it's the other way around. About one quarter are non-Singaporeans, about three quarters are Singaporeans of permanent residence. And it's quite clear that if you took that whole wafer fat plant together, if we didn't have that mix of Singaporean and non-Singaporean workers, the wafer fat plant will not be here, and that one quarter of Singaporeans who are working on the production floor, and three quarters of Singaporeans, urban residents who are working in the professional arena in that, in that wafer fat plant would have no jobs, or certainly would not have a job at that plant. So there are categories of work like that. We do have permanent residents and uh, employment pass holders who are largely professionals. And they come here and they work for longer periods of time. And here they fill up jobs, again, for which we don't have enough Singaporeans to do all those jobs. Sometimes it's specialities which we don't have enough of. Um, sometimes it's specific knowledge of um, say parts of the world which Singaporeans don't have enough knowledge of, market knowledge. And this helps us and our companies to grow and to create new market opportunities for themselves in different parts of the world. Um, again, a good number of our financial institutions, uh, those who are doing R&D, uh, they probably would not set up shop in Singapore at all if they did not have the option of employing people um, who came from other parts of the world as well. Then, from among those who have decided to be PRs, some proportion of them eventually either get offered Singapore citizenship or apply for citizenship and become Singapore citizens. And these are people who have taken the sort of final step. They identify with the vision with the goals that we have for the society that we live in. And they want to make a contribution together with other Singaporeans to build a better society for the future.